Well, that is much better. Hello again, and good morning. Sorry about that. I did, um, if you caught the three minute video right before this one, I did start a live stream and I messed up the orientation with the camera. So it was uh, appearing vertical instead of horizontal with, with the whole uh, workspace, which was really annoying. Um, and apparently what I had done wrong was that when I was setting up the video, apparently I was holding the phone in the wrong orientation and I think that's what did it. But anyway, <laughs> sorry about that, we're back. Um, I'm going to set up my little playtime today. I'm very excited to finally be playing with these and I'm super excited to have you here with me. I just need to clean up my desk a little bit. I was working this morning. My batteries are dead in my, micro, my uh, vacuum here. I was working a little bit this morning on, uh, here we go, some stuff for my Etsy shop. So I have a little bit of embossing powder, irritatingly enough, around here. Just cleaning it up, cleaning up. My little vacuum that I got from my friend Betsy. straightened out. So today, and I won't bore you with the long saga of how I came about it, but I have the uh, the Brutus Monroe powdered elements that I would like to play with today. And suffice to say that I waited uh, quite a bit to be able to play with these. <laughs> um, but I was watching the uh, introductory video about these again. And I thought that I would do some experiments because these are not inexpensive. Let me bring it up. I think this is around, including the glue. And this is the glue pad that you use to go with the elements, which comes from Brutus Monroe. Mine doesn't have any labeling on the package. And that is the way that it came to me, <clears throat> uh, which again is a whole long, a whole long story, which isn't exactly relevant to this experiment, but I am assured by Brutus Monroe's customer service that although this doesn't have any packaging on it, this is the glue ink that does go with the powdered elements. So I'm bringing up their website here. I'll be able to let you know how much it costs. It was out of stock for a while, and now I and now I believe that it is back in stock, but we'll take a peek. Oh, I must have bumped something that moved the camera, sorry. Here we go. Okay, so the powdered elements are $16.99, this set of three. And I believe that the ink pad was around $10 and I don't see that. Let me link, let me link stuff for you guys in chat and in the replay sticky glue pad, I think is what they call it. Let's see. Yeah, sticky glue pad is $9.99. So if you're going to get both of them, it's $27 plus shipping, of course. So they're not cheap. So I thought that we would do a little bit of playing with them. Uh, good morning, Teresa. I thought that we would do a little bit of playing with them. And as I was watching them go through the introduction, it occurred to me that the look that they're getting is very similar to something that you can do with like perfect pearls. So everybody has perfect pearls. I thought that we would do kind of an experiment to compare the technique using perfect pearls on cardstock and the Brutus Monroe. So we can kind of see if this really is worth it or not. I've never used them. I've never opened them. So I have no idea. So I thought that this is something that we could do together. So let me see. This is the powdered elements. As far as I know, this is the only uh, color combination that they have for the powdered elements. And icky sticky glue pad. So I'll get those both linked down below if you want to take a look at them. I am still shaking something that's shaking my phone. I'm sorry about that. I don't even know what Pearl X is. <laughs> what is that? Please do share. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. 
And if you look right on the Brutus Monroe YouTube page, um, or even just do a search for it, you can see some of the things that they have done with this. Basically, what I'll open it from the other side of that. What what had appealed to me was I don't have a laminator or any of those cool real, real foiling things, and honestly. I wouldn't do any kind of foiling or anything enough to warrant spending the money on all of the supplies and finding the place to store it because storage is such a premium. So when I was watching the uh, the introduction of this product, it looked like the stamping that he was doing with it, it looked like it was foiled and it was amazing. It was beautiful. So, you know, these three bottles versus having the store laminator and different kinds of, um, foiling stuff, foiling paper. Uh, it just, it looked like it was <laughs> a lot more cost effective and a lot easier on the storage to go with something like this. Cause I do like the looks of foiling stuff. I just don't do it. Uh, it's the same thing, only it doesn't have the bonding agent in it. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, no, I've never played with that. And, and honestly, I've, I've not really ever really played with the Perfect Pearls too much either. I think I've just put them in water or whatnot. But again, that's what it kind of reminded me of when he was working with it. So I was like, hey, let's see if it would work. So, And I figured we would try it with the glue pad, the Pearl, the Perfect Pearls with the glue pad, and we'll try it with Versamark too to see, to see what we get. So... I, oh shoot, I forgot to wet my, uh, whatever it's called, my stamp chamois. I'll, I will be right back. I knew there was something I forgot to do. I got distracted. Um, when they did the uh, sample projects, uh, he's working on black cardstock, so I thought that we would do the same. I'm going to open up this glue pad, which feels sticky on the outside. I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's kind of gross. I have some black 110 pound cardstock, and I just got a little wet a little, wet a little bit from recollections. This is uh, scrap cardstock that got damaged and banged up when we moved, and I held it aside specifically for this purpose. I figured I would use it for my experiments instead of <laughs> hanging on to it. I will I will have to look up Pearl X because I hadn't heard of that and this Brutus Monroe stuff is the first time that I had ever seen anything like this. The kind of the look of foiling without all of the hassling and the supplies of foiling, I'm all for it. But it did kind of look like also working with perfect pearls just the way that the powder was so I thought that we would do both and compare and see and then if it works I'm gonna make a couple of backgrounds for Christmas cards because I have some ideas so I'm gonna be stamping with um, I picked out from uh, sweet stamp shop I have the retro uh, retro background set and I really loved this sort of funky uh, Jetson Z kind of stamp set here and I loved this background and I don't think I've ever had a chance to use it or maybe I have maybe I have once um, on something and I thought that would be fun because it offers kind of both a nice solid repeating image and it also open, also opens kind of like that open open work on the diamond there so we'll be working with that and I need paintbrushes which I do have and they are within reach Okay, that's just to dust on the powder and I need paper towel, which is also in reach. For my craft area, I use the Viva paper towels, which is uh, very soft, like, like fabric, I like it. Okay, so other than that, I don't think that we need anything really to get started. So let's just go ahead and get started. Easy enough project to introduce. So let's start with Let's stamp with the Versamark and the Perfect Pearls, and we'll see what that looks like. Now, the way that they talk about the powdered element is it almost looks like heat embossing without having a heat emboss. So this might be a really good alternative to someone who uh, doesn't have a heat gun, or for other reasons can't, can't heat emboss. 
So we're just going to dab a little bit of the powder right on to the verse mark. Ooh, that's really pretty. And again, this is perfect pearls that I'm working with. And I do have, obviously it's off camera, I have a trash barrel, uh, my little trash barrel on the floor over here that I will be taking stuff to go flip onto. Oops, sorry, I forgot about my camera angles again. I keep, I keep meaning to have my husband bring the whole camera pod over this way about two inches, which would be a lot more convenient for all of us. I keep forgetting. <laughs> He's been busy. Try the Brutus Monroe stuff with the Versamark pad. Yeah, 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 that's a really good idea. That's, we'll try everything with everything. Okay, so I just dusted it off in the trash a little bit. And I'm gonna take my paper towel and kind of rub it, rub the excess off. As you can see, it rubbed off some of the perfect pearls. Not a big deal. Let's, um, let's write down, in the name of science, let's make sure that we're keeping good data. So this is the perfect pearls. with Versamark. So here we go with that one. And all right, it's a good thing you're here, Teresa. <laughs> Let me, oh, I'm, I'll use, I'll do Versamark with, um, should I do that now? I think I meant to introduce the colors of the Brutus Monroe powder elements and I didn't do that yet. Probably because I don't remember what they're called. Let's see, we've got Penny, Sterling, and Gilded are the three colors that we have here. I'll probably have to get my label maker out and put quick little labels on these so that I don't forget. Let's use, um, let's use Penny because this color is so pretty this beautiful copper color. So we're gonna do Versamark again, but we're gonna use the penny with it. Well, I'm glad that you're here this morning. I, I, I this is like, well, only the third time I've ever streamed and I actually missed not streaming last week. We were just so busy. I probably shouldn't even be streaming today because I have a ton of stuff to do, <laughs> but I just, I can't help it. I. I really, really, really wanted to work with this. I'm wondering, I have to make a birthday card tomorrow. I thought I might stream that as well. We'll see. It's gonna have to be a short stream today. We're busy. <laughs> All right, remembering before I start to move the paper so that everyone can see what I'm doing. I have my stamp. I'm just stamping it up with Versamark. Boom. Get that right down on here. These stamps are really nice. I'm gonna take some of that powder and just dip my brush in here, brushing it in. That was probably a little bit more powder than I needed. This powder is very fine, uh, a lot finer than an embossing powder, so I don't know if any attempts to funnel leftovers back into the container are even worth it. I guess I got some of it back in there, but I think it might be more mess than it's worth. I'm going to take this off camera, tap it into the trash a little bit. Okay, take my trusty paper towel and wipe. So it stayed on pretty good. I kind of blurred the, the lines a little bit, but this is all for the name of science. It did stay on very well. It doesn't feel wet to the touch. It's not, um, What's the word? It's not smearing, but I did just, I was just able to wipe some of it off with my finger. And this is with the Versamark. So here we've got the, powdered elements and Versamark. Okay, let us get this out of the way. I'm going to quickly clean off my stamp now that we're going to be switching adhesive medium. Oh, I'm doing okay. Thank you. Re recovering <laughs> from a weird chest cold. 
Uh, I have a girlfriend who had a face, like a sinus infection that went into her chest. She had it for weeks and her daughter still has it. And it's like turned into pneumonia for her daughter. It's really dangerous. I'm doing fine though. We're all fine. Except for I have a, I have an abscess in my gums right now and it's my own fault. I still have my wisdom teeth because I've never had any issues with them. So they, they didn't take them out when I was a teenager. And I was trying to get like a piece of popcorn stuck from the back of my tooth. And I cut my own gums with one of those uh, flosser things. And now I have an abscess in the, right behind the tooth on the gums. It is really irritating. <laughs> I actually have really nice teeth. My parents invested quite a lot of money into my mouth, so I have very nice teeth and I've always taken care of them. Uh, and my poor husband has terrible teeth and just, you know, lots of infections and uh, cavities and just lots of agony. So I'm getting like a little bit of a glimpse into what he goes through and like on a daily basis. And I'm, I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> anyway, okay. So we're gonna glue, and I've never used this ink. It's not, not overly wet, but it's a nice damp pad here. And it's inking up nicely. Let's give this a try. It's stamped and I, ooh, it smells. It smells like Elmer's glue. Well, I don't know about that, about labor pain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all set with labor vein. <laughs> and it's not so much the tooth. I literally just have like a really, really small abscess behind my tooth on my gum. But because I do still have my wisdom teeth, my mouth is pretty crowded. So I think that it just, I'm having a hard time in that area. <laughs> Overcrowding. All right. So we're putting the perfect pearls on the glue. I'm gonna tap that off into my trash. Oh, that's good to know, yeah, if the glue pad could dry out pretty quickly. It, I mean, it, it, it legit, like, I'm wondering if it's just really watered down Elmer's glue and you could just re-ink it. I, I would bet that it would be worth a try before uh, investing. Okay. So that is the powdered elements with the glue pad. Let me write that down before I forget. Not powdered elements, the perfect pearls with the glue pad. Okay. And let's have a look at the perfect pearls with the Versamark. Really cool. It could also be because I'm really inexperienced, maybe I'm just pressing down a little bit too hard with um with wiping it away so we can certainly try this again now this let me make sure i've got a clean finger i'm rubbing off a little bit but not nearly as much as i was with the versamark now in the in the videos they didn't use any kind of heat tool or whatnot to to heat them to kind of keep to preserve it but we could this could be, maybe it's just a little damp. We could hit it with a heat tool as well, just to, uh, to see what that's going to do. So the last one that we have to do is the glue pad and the pattern elements. <laughs> You're not old. I was speaking to a friend of my stepson's on Facebook this morning. My stepson um, is an adult, uh, technically. Uh, <laughs> and he and his friend apparently had this Facebook fan page or whatever. And long story short, but they, they trusted someone that they gave permissions to help with the administrative roles on the Facebook page and that person basically kicked them off the Facebook page and took over and there's nothing they can do about it because the Facebook's fine print says hey you know if you it's your own fault if you give you know give your stuff over to idiots but anyway so I was talking to his friend this morning and he kept saying all these things and I'm like dude <laughs> back up <laughs> I'm old I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> 
or conversely, I kept using the wrong the wrong words because I knew what I was talking about, but and I knew what he was talking about. I was just using the wrong words or whatever and and he's just like, "But I didn't, you know, that's not what I keep saying." And I'm like, "I know, I know, but I'm old and <laughs> It's just me. I do like this. is a it's, a it's a nice foam pad and it's just boom. It's bouncing right back. My stepsons are 24 and 22. 23 and 22. 23 and 22, I think. The elder's going to be 24. 24? He was born in 94, I think. Oh my god, I don't even know. I can't do math right now. The elder is 24 or 25. He's the one that just uh, had the baby with his wife. And the younger one, I think, is 22. And that's the one that I was, I was trying to help one of his friends this morning. All right, so we're putting powdered elements on. This is such a pretty color. And it really is going on shiny like a penny. Shiny like a penny. Okay, I'm gonna tap this out into the trash or quasi near the trash, it's powder. I'm just hoping that I'm getting the trash. I haven't vacuumed yet uh, in a couple of days, so it's okay if I miss. So this one might just be user error with the stamping here. Uh, went on very nicely with the glue. Let's get a clean finger. Do the finger rub. We're still getting some rub off. I was under the impression that the rub off wasn't um, something that was supposed to happen. So this, the powdered elements is acting very much on the glue is acting just as Teresa suspecting, suspected very much as the powdered elements on, um, the verse mark. So those are pretty on par and the same thing with the, the perfect pearls. So it might just be the powder and not necessarily the adhesive that you're using. Let's try it again. Only this time, let's grab a heat tool and see if that helps. Just hit it with the heat tool for a little bit to just dry the adhesive and see. All right, we've already got the powdered elements out. Let's, let's do this. Let's do it. We'll mass produce. Get my first mark out as well. Oh, I didn't write it down. Okay, this is Powdered elements and glue. Okay. Oops, wrong one. Powdered elements and glue. Let's clean the stamp. Let that dry. Let a sec to dry. Let's try it with the first mark. And the Versamark looks like it stamps a little bit more cleanly than the glue, which is an interesting observation. And if we look right at the glue pad, versus the Versamark pad. This one is more of like a foamy sponge. It's a lot more porous than this one. So I wonder if that has something to do with it. Just the, um, how thickly the adhesive gets applied to the stamp. Okay, so here we are. This is the glue and this is the Versamark. And I don't know about you guys, but the Versamark looks like it's, this one is the Versamark and this one is the glue. The Versamark looks like it's, the copper color is a little bit darker. I'm gonna hit it with my heat tool a little bit to see if that helps some of the uh, the rub off.
Even though technically you're not supposed to uh, need to do any kind of thing that's close to heat embossing. This is just for my own morbid curiosity. Okay, so this is the one that, these are the two that we just did. This is Versamark and this is Glue. Oh, look at that. Look at all that rub off with the Versamark. And you don't get that with the glue. You, I mean, you get a little bit, but it's not, um, it's not messing with the actual, you're not taking, there's not enough rub off to mess with the actual, um, I guess, structure. <laughs> the quality of the, the stamp job. So the Versamark, it looks nicer, but it's a lot easier to rub off. So, so far I can't recommend this for any kind of project on like your cards where people will actually be touching and handling your work. If, it, if you were doing like a, a sign for a baby's room or something or a piece of artwork that you were going to frame, I would say definitely go with the Versamark because it's going to be behind glass and nobody's going to touch it. It just, it stamps a lot, uh, a lot better than the glue pad does. And therefore I think that's the reason why the powder is sticking to it better. It looks a lot nicer, but, uh, for longevity purposes, it's just not. Let's try the same thing with the Perfect Pearls, just so that we can compare the actual work with the powders. <sighs> Dusting off my paintbrush here. And let's see, the stamp has Versamark on it already, so we'll go ahead and stamp with the Versamark. And we'll clean the stamp. Uh-oh, I just saw a little naughty kitty come along. Hi, Pan. Cats are mad at me this morning. I forgot the order in which the pets get fed breakfast and um, the rabbit uh, was out of her cage and terrorizing them this morning and they their breakfast was delayed. Okay, here we go with the glue. And perfect pearls. Oh, I have my fan going above me, so I'm losing a little bit of powder. <laughs> All right, perfect pearls. This is such a pretty color gold. My next thought was I would like to open up the uh, the gilded one from Bruce Monroe and see how it compares color-wise to the perfect pearls gold here. I am making a mess. We'll look at all the colors. All right, tapping off. Making a mess. Now this one, the perfect pearls, the rub off the direct rub off in the beginning with the perfect pearls is a lot more uh, on both the glue although not as significantly with the Versamark but on both of them it is definitely different than the results that you get using the perfect pearl up oh, not the pearl pearls the powdered elements I'm just cleaning my stamp which is getting discolored from all the uh, all the stamping. <clears throat> okay, get the cap on that, and we will compare Perfect Pearls on Versamark and Glue Pad. Let's see. There's with the Versamark, and there's on the Glue Pad. So same thing. Um, there's more rub off with the Versamark than there is the Glue Pad. Uh, however, the powder coverage um, looks a little bit different between. Let me grab the. 
between this is the this copper color is the actual powdered elements and these are the perfect pearls so I guess very general basic conclusions that I can come I can formulate from this very scientific experiment here in my living room is that powdered element and not powdered elements perfect pearls will work in lieu of the powdered elements just not as well um, the Versamark will work in lieu of the glue pad, definitely not as well, and not recommended if it's on a project that other people are going to be touching. So it is probably worth the 10 bucks to invest in the glue pad if you're going to do any kind of card making or scrapbook pages. I mean, if the scrapbook pages are going to be in um, sleeves and nobody's actually going to be touching it, I don't know, and I don't know the longevity of this I don't know if the powder will slowly fall off over time or whatnot but if you are if you are a card maker or plan to do things that people will handle it is probably worth investing in the glue pad you can use the perfect pearls it looks fine just not as good as the powdered elements let's take a look at the powdered element colors and compare those because that looks like fun too let me grab a fresh um, piece of black paper, right? One more piece of black scrap over here that I didn't prepare because I didn't think I would need it. But. And we'll just compare colors to have some fun with the colors. We've come this far, we may as well have a look at the colors. Again, as far as I know, these are the only three that show up on their website. So as far as I know, these are the only three um, that I can think of that they have. We'll do another, uh, another one here so that we can compare them side by side. This one is going to be Penny. And let us stamp. Let us commence with the stamping. And let me get my brush. I have plans for these for Christmas cards. I've already started filming for my Christmas card series for YouTube. I'm pretty excited about it. I have several videos just featuring unicorns. <laughs> As befitting my station in life as the mother of a 10 year old. It's all about unicorns and mermaids. My daughter's room is actually mermaids, but we do like our unicorns. So what I'm not liking as I'm dusting some of this off is some of the excess powder on the background here. I'm gonna have to be more careful if I'm stamping on, if I'm gonna be stamping on black for my projects, I'm gonna have to be more careful to not apply as much powder because I'm having a hard time getting the excess dusted off the edges here. A little irritating. Okay, so that is the penny, and let's do the, which one is this, this one called, well, this one is called sterling, which is silver. That one did not stamp very well. Let me try that again. The coverage is not good in the center here. Let me try this again. Much better. All right, we haven't seen this one yet. This one is sterling. Right off the bat, this is a really nice silver color. It reminds me of. I do have silver uh, embossing powder from Recollections. Um, and the silver is like a nice rich dark silver, but I also have some silver embossing powder from Hero Arts that has glitter in it. And this color reminds me of the silver that's in, that is in that embossing powder without the glitter, of course. It's like a nice light, shade of silver. Experiment with the baby wipe. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Wiping, wiping, wiping. You see, it, it, I mean, it gets off a lot of it, but 
I'm sure we're not entirely like unlike heat embossing where you do get, you know, a bit of um, just powder left over on your blacks. <clears throat> okay, so the last one is... Gilded, is that what this one was called? The Gilded. Gilded. I'm gonna need another piece of paper towel soon. I'm gonna get inked up. And here is that gold I wanted to compare to the Perfect Pearls gold. This one looks a lot uh, richer, a lot more earthy gold. This is this is a beautiful color. Holy crap! Look at that. It's so pretty. Okay. The cap on because I like to knock stuff over. I don't have any rabbit. And here's the bunny rabbit, who's probably here to steal stuff out of the trash and is mad that there's nothing in this trash she can steal. Okay, quickly let's compare the final color product to the Perfect Pearls Gold. Now the shine on the Perfect Pearls Gold, there's a lot more shine, but the colors, the shades themselves seem to be pretty close. Even though they don't look the same in the bottles here. The, and I'm sure that it doesn't look the same on camera either. The Perfect Pearls has a lot of yellow in it, and that definitely comes out more versus more brown in the powdered elements, but the final product is, is pretty close. Even on the final product, you can tell that the Perfect Pearls is a little bit more yellow and the powdered elements is a little bit more brown, but they're pretty close. So if it was only in the budget to get one or the other, hopefully that helps you. Oops. The, I was just going to throw this away. It's the cover for the glue thing. Hopefully that helps you make more of an informed decision. I do happen to have some baby powder, uh, baby wipes right next to me. So we will give that a try and see what it does. And it's okay if it ruins stuff because we're just experimenting with scraps. Let's see. Of course I grab like the juiciest to baby wipe ever. I swear these things are never damp when you take one out of the package and now that I'm trying to be careful. Let's um let's go all out and see what a baby wipe just does on and we'll look at it in a couple of minutes and see what it dries like after we intentionally try to wipe some of the color off and see what kind of a see what kind of a product we end up with. So I can't choose between these colors. I'm not sure which one is my favorite. <laughs> I don't know, but I want to make a couple of backgrounds for a Christmas project that I'm going to work on. So I figured whichever one worked out the best, I would do some backgrounds with as kind of like our project here. Just cleaning up my stamp so that I can put it away. If you're interested in this stamp set from Sweet Stamp Shop, I think that it has been discontinued. I can double check on that, but I thought that this set was really fun and very sort of futuristic Jetsons-y kind of, um, it reminded me you of know, the old cartoon, the Jetsons, it, it reminded me of that quite a bit. Let's have a look and see. And now I have something in my eye. Awesome. Everything's going really well for me today. <laughs> Speed stamp shop. Let's see. Oh, they do have a last chance section on Sweet Stamp Shop's website. Uh, it, it, wow. It is still, they still have this stamp set. And it has been discontinued in its clearance. So they have this stamp set for only $2. So if you are interested, definitely 
swoop in and snag that. Well, I'm going to link it right in chat in case anyone is interested. That's the uh, the background for this, the stamp set for this retro background. $2. What an amazing deal. It's a 2x6 stamp set made of photopolymer, manufactured in the United States. 12 images, perfect for a variety of crafty uses. They are quite fun. They have a whole... Um, last chance section here and because i'm a compulsive shopper oh my god so this stamp set that you can see right here i haven't had a chance to use it yet so it's still in the package this one um is out of stock and it's no longer available but it was as low as a dollar this stamp set was how did i not see that when this was a dollar <laughs> how like me to you know buy something full price they have quite a few things in their last chance section, really reasonably priced. Wow, so cute. Oh my goodness, I need to stop looking. I need to stop shopping. I'm not supposed to be shopping at all. I ended up placing a Simon Says Stamp order last week, or this week anyway, even though I'm not supposed to, <laughs> uh, just because they had some really good prices. I actually don't remember what their shipping is. Um, because it's been so long since I've ordered. When I placed a huge order from them at the time, um, and I got a ton of stamps, like 30 different sets or something, so I don't remember. I may have even gotten free shipping at the time, but I will tell you that as a cheap uh, American shopper, if the shipping was unreasonable, I would not have purchased from them. So <laughs> the fact that I have these things in at all tells me that... Um, <laughs> that I got a good deal on it. But definitely, if you're going to check it out, look at their last chance section. They have a font set, which is really nice. There's a really cute um, Explore the Sea stamp set, which I've now got my eye on. It has some really adorable narwhals and a little girl scuba diving. Um, and that's only $10 down from 20 And I'm just looking at some of their sample projects are amazing. I hope it doesn't sell out. Um, I'm going to put this on my wish list for next week because I think that this is adorable. Definitely check it out. Sweet Stamp Shop. The link to that background is in the description. Anyway, so these have dried a little bit. Let's have a look. So I rubbed, I intentionally rubbed them with a baby wipe just to see what it would do. And it did rub off some of the color, but not all of the color. And it did, uh, did smoosh a little bit. Anyway, okay. <laughs> I'm satisfied. I am satisfied with these experiments. If I didn't already have the powdered elements, I probably would have just invested in the glue and then continued to use my perfect pearls until they were gone and then invested in the powdered elements. But I have them there here. I'm going to use them. And I have some plans for some Christmas card backgrounds. And I'm going to make you complicit in my plans to make the backgrounds. I'm going to grab my stamp platform. Okay, so I'm going to be using today the um, cling rubber stamp from My Favorite Things. This is called the Musical Notes Background. I've used this a couple times in a couple of different projects. It's really cute and I'll be using it to do some backgrounds for some planned Christmas cards. I love, I love my clear stamps because they're so easy to store and you get a lot of value for your money. Um, and I'm not so much thrilled with storing the foam stamps, but I will never go back to getting large background stamps in the photopolymer. I had such a hard time getting those to work, but with the rubber stamps, no issues. I will make room in my stash to store the occasional cling stamp. Okay, so I'm going to make some backgrounds. So these are going to be big powdered element things. <laughs> Because I wanted some backgrounds with these musical notes on them, and I wanted it to be sparkly. And I gotta move my platform the wrong way. I'm still not used to this. Here we go. No wonder why I was feeling. Uh, can you hear the tree crew? I have my window open. It's gorgeous today. It's October 10th 
it's almost 70 degrees and it was 70 degrees yesterday absolutely gorgeous this weather could maintain all year round but i have many windows open around the house including one a few feet behind me because i needed the air uh, how often do you usually order from different companies? Um, for monthly kits, I used to get two. I used to get the one from Alpha Stamps, but I canceled that because I was having a hard time keeping up with it. And I get um, the Hero Arts kit, and then that's it. Um, I don't usually get all the newest and best. <laughs> I don't think that I do anyway. I am, I am keenly aware. I do have a few... Um, card making friends, particularly in my paper crafting groups that are not as fortunate as I am. Um, so I am, I am keenly aware and don't mean to seem like a snob uh, that it might seem like I have quite a bit um, in compared to some other people that live on a much stricter budget. Um, I very much would not be able to get anything if I didn't sell my cards. So <laughs> like we are not wealthy people. We live paycheck to paycheck, uh, very tight budget. Um, and there are weeks where even I have to sell stuff just because we need to eat or pay a bill or get the car fixed or whatever. Uh, fortunately those are few and far between, but, um, I would not be able to do anything if I didn't have my Etsy and my eBay because, and I sell a few things locally as well. That is how I get my crafty spending money. And if I'm not selling anything then I can't buy anything. And because we moved, back in September and I had been closed since mid-August because all of my stuff was packed up and didn't get open. Hi Keisha's Creations! And didn't get reopened until mid-September. I missed like a whole month of income. So there's like a whole month of spending money that I just did not. <laughs> so uh, when I say that I wasn't supposed to be shopping at, at, at Simon Says Stamp, I really was not supposed to be shopping at Simon Says Stamp. Basically I had spent money that I hadn't even earned yet. So. <laughs> really not supposed to be shopping. I'm supposed to be waiting until I get back on board. Uh, but in terms of how often, I usually do not buy a lot this time of year anyway, because I don't do a lot of Christmas card making. I tapped my cord here and that's why my phone is shaking. Sorry. Um, I, all of my Christmas cards and stuff have to be planned and or started working on them like for as far back as July. So in this time of year, everything that's coming out is Christmas stuff and that's too late for me. <laughs> so I will basically buy after the new year, I will buy this year's Christmas stuff for next year's cards. So I don't, because a lot of it's Christmas, I don't do a lot of shopping this time of year anyway. However, Black Friday, I will swoop in and, and steal the deals. But otherwise, um, I tend to stick to a modest budget around $50 a week, 25 to $50 a week. Um, for my craft stuff as long as I'm making, now I shouldn't say making, profiting, as long as I'm profiting that amount of money on my cards, as you guys know, um, there's not a lot of, I'm gonna keep crafting while I'm talking. Uh, there's not a lot of profit in selling your handmade cards. So, <laughs> uh, so you know, I might have to set to sell 10 cards or whatever, uh, or technically more than that in order to to clear the $50 that I need because there are fees associated with it and actually I have I do have to track expenses in terms of supplies that I use for the business and all of those things. Um, most, well I don't really sell a lot of cards on eBay. I sell um, other things on eBay. I sell a couple cards here and there. Mostly what sells on eBay if you're interested in cards on eBay is um, personalized cards, believe it or not. Um, like at Easter time, there, I make a Easter card that I can personalize using the writing feature on my Cricut. Um, and those sell at Easter time, which is surprising because you can almost never sell anything handmade <laughs> on eBay. You want the stamp platform? Is that what you're talking about, Keisha? Get it while you can, girl. Because, yeah, <laughs> uh, there's been this whole thing with, I'm not sure the, the particulars, but the whole thing with the, um, what are they called? My Sweet Petunia, the makers of the Misty and 
Tim Holtz isn't going to be able to sell his product in the United States anymore. So if you want a Tim Holtz platform, get it while the retailers still have it. Uh, no, I don't, Teresa. I, um, I really don't. <laughs> I sell, um, on, on Etsy, I do sell at Christmas time. I do sell paper crafting kits for children. Um, and it's not really, it's not so much of a, like a, a make your card kit thing. <laughs> It's actually more something that's kind of my daughter's, uh, my daughter's thing. So I will, uh, put together some fun little kits. Um, this, this stamp platform you can find for under $30 usually. Um, and again, it's one of the, you really want to find it, um, make sure that you can find it before it's gone because they will not be able to sell it in the United States. I got mine at Blitzy when they were having a 50% off sale. So I got mine really cheap. Let's see what they have right now. We can take a look. Oh my god, I forgot. I can't look at Blitzy because Blitzy is moving, so they're closed. Um, let's see. Maybe I can find you a cheap one. We'll find something. Let's see. Joanne says they have it for $27.99. I'm going to restamp that because it didn't do very well. I don't know if you can see. It didn't do very well in this section. Um... It's on Amazon for twenty eight fifty right now. This is one of those things where I would say hold off for the best deal, but knowing that you're not going to be able to get it anymore once all of the United States uh, retailers sell out, they won't be able to restock them. Don't wait. <laughs> I see them. Oh, it's just the small one. I see the small one on Joanne's website for twenty eight, so that's probably not a very good deal. Let's see, Simon Says Stamp has it for 35 So Simon Says Stamp tends to be pretty much on trend with what the retail prices are supposed to be. Here's one from Joann's. Joann's Stamp Platform, $31.99. It's on sale from $39.99. 30% off all paper crafting online only deal. You also might be able to use, uh, here, I'll, I'll link the Joann's one for you. You might be able to use when it's not on sale, you might be able to use like a coupon or something. Oh, shit, I messed that up. <laughs> um, there's not, uh, um, there's two different sizes. There's a travel size and then there's a full size, which is the one that I have here. I had heard from some other crafters that the full size one was too big. So I almost went with the stamping one and I'm glad that I didn't because I do not find this to be too big. I find it to actually be the perfect size. It's, it's like 11 and a half inches by nine and three quarters inches. So it's not very big. I've read that it takes over the whole workspace and I'm not finding that at all. This is the regular size. I think anything smaller than this, I'd be pretty irritated with. I like, I like that I can use a whole background stamp on here. I like that I could even put 12 by 12 scrapbook paper in here because it only has the uh, little barriers here on the two sides. Yeah, I think I linked the full size at Joann's. Yep, that's the full size. Now it doesn't come with, where did it go? Uh, it, you can buy the neoprene sleeve to go with it, the stamp platform sleeve. I bought one because I store my stamp platform on its side on the floor, leaning up against my desk, which is also where I store my scoreboard and my trimmer and all those things just because I don't have any storage but if you're not going to be storing yours on the floor <laughs> I probably wouldn't worry about it I have pets and a 10 year old and um, it just it made the most sense to me to get the um, to get the sleeve which is uh, something that is sold separate at, at a different price <clears throat> all right so I forgot what I was doing oh, yeah I messed up my stamping on this one I moved it and whatever <laughs> We're just going to do it again. Not a big deal. I'm actually just going to use the back side of the paper because that's so much I don't care. Let me try even I can move it into the corner. That might help me. I'm also new to using the stamp platform in case it's not obvious. So you'll forgive my newbie mistakes. Yeah, I'm sure that those creative quarters work just fine in the Tim Holtz. I'm in um, a paper crafting group, not an exchange group, but just um, a paper crafting group on Facebook, and they fiercely 
uh, defend the Misty, so you're not allowed to talk about, um, you're not allowed to talk about, like, the, the lawsuit or anything there, so it's hard to get some of the deets, some of the details about what's going on. So basically everything that I know is, like, the rumor, the word on the street. We'll just try this again. I was really impressed with the quality um, of the of the Tim Holtz stamp platform. I was not expecting to like it nearly as much as I did. I was using the Hampton Art Stamp Perfect platform, uh, which was which was pulled off the market uh, because of Misty. Uh, it wasn't uh, a, they just couldn't sell it anymore, but it wasn't a problem to have it. <clears throat> so I was using that and. Um, I couldn't replace it when I started to get ugh. And I decided I wanted to try something else. And you found the Misty to be ugh. <laughs> I wanted to do gold here. <laughs> and I put the confound it. <laughs> Sometimes swear words aren't enough. Ooh, how fun would it be to try to do like an ombre of the different colors? Maybe when I get a little bit more exper experienced. Because it's moving the powder. Oh, the Hampton Art. Um, that is not the right thing. Okay. I don't have any rabbit. <clears throat> I have actually never used the Misty, but I have used the Hampton Art one, and I think that because you found it to be exactly like using the Misty is exactly why you can no longer buy it. Uh, and perhaps rightfully so. Um, I picked it up not really knowing the who's from the what's or whatever. <laughs> it worked fine, but it got, ugh, it got yucky, and it couldn't, it was kind of like beyond the point where I could clean it. I thought I would give something a try, something else a try. The the Tim Holtz platform went on sale. It was a really good price. I was not expecting to like it nearly as much as I do. I I really love it, and I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't go with it sooner. I have heard good things about the Stampin' Up! Stamparatus too, but that one's a bit out of my price range. But this, it's really, maybe not so much the bottom, but the top, the clear plastic part is really heavy, thick quality. Um, you really feel like you're doing a good job, I guess I want to say, <laughs> when you're stamping. All right. Look at that. What am I doing wrong? Am I not rubbing it hard enough? Maybe I need to watch the videos again. My beautiful blue smudged. It's getting on my fingers too. I'm glad that I waited to shower today. <laughs> I'll have to do this after. I'm losing half my afternoon because Leah has a doctor's appointment. She normally doesn't get home till 4.30, which is awesome, but I have to pick her up at school today. So that looks really pretty, but I'm not sure what I'm doing to get it all gush, like all the, the mess in here. When I watched him do it, he did not have this problem. But then again, I think he was only working on black so maybe you just couldn't tell is that the problem let's do this on black and have a look let me get some black Small platform only for yeah the the smaller platform i think is priced the way that it is because and it's not really that much smaller than the original one and i think it's a novelty too because it it came out first definitely definitely go with the bigger one as you can see 
it really is not taking over my whole desk. I think people are being a little bit over dramatic. And if you get the pouch eventually, it can still go into a bag quite easily if you're going to go to a crop or whatnot. Not everyone can afford to have everything. Trying my anti-static ba uh, static bag is a good idea, and actually I do have it right here because I thought that might come in handy. So let's try that. Let's try that. Let's try it on the blue, and we'll see. I'm not sure if it'll make a difference either, but you don't know until you try. We'll coat it up good. We'll coat it up to the point where I can no longer breathe. Okay. Glue pad. So get your stamp platform and let us know how you like it. And I don't know if you saw too, Keisha, uh, that I was able to take the cover off here and flip it around. Uh, there's two different positions that you can use it. If this, if this side right here is facing up, it's for your clear stamps, and you can just take the cover right off. It's generally a lot easier than I make it look because I'm kind of uh, spazzy, but and you can just and then just flip it for your rubber stamps. if you still use rubber stamps. Okay, well that doesn't stamp all that great, but whatever. We're in experimentation phase. Maybe I'll try using less powder too, because that could be my problem. Maybe I just over powdered and a heavy hand with the powder. As usual though, it seems like whatever I do, I mess it up. So <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I do projects like this, not on camera, of course, where there's witnesses, but it just, it comes out looking really not remotely as good as other people make it look like. I think probably the worst person in the world for my self-esteem is Jennifer McGuire. <laughs> she makes everything look so easy. And I, I don't want to say that I've met her personally, but I've conversed with her before uh, in Facebook groups and stuff. And she's she seems like a very nice, very sweet, genuine person. But man, <laughs> sometimes I got to avoid her videos because I feel like crap <laughs> whenever I make something. Ooh. She is so talented. That's the hard part. And again, like, she's just, she seems so nice and such a down-to-earth person that you can't actually hate her. But <laughs> but you could be like, man, <laughs> how do you make that look so good? I have no idea. I thought of her a lot when I was doing my um, alcohol ink. Uh, we're talking about Jennifer McGuire. My alcohol ink background experiments and hers just like, she's like, yeah, and I just, you know, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, how did you do that? <laughs> that is so unfair. <laughs> yeah, I think anybody, anybody who's anybody on YouTube and a card maker knows who Jennifer McGuire is. She does a lot of, um, like, background techniques and things that I actually don't do. <clears throat> So I don't watch her a ton. You know who I do love, though, is um, I love uh, Christina Werner and Amy uh, Rice Rice. Is that how you say her name? Rice Savvy or just Amy R. Fairy Paper and Ink. I love both of those channels. Okay. Oh, I haven't brushed it with paper towel yet. This is with the um, the anti-static powder. And this is not, this is just because I stamped it crappy and decided I was just going to go with it. I'm not really seeing too much of a difference here.
what's his name? Is that his name, Chris, the uh, Brutus Monroe creator? I'm trying to remember. He, I believe when he did his um, reveal of this project, he only did this on black. So it could be that this is just what it does, and maybe it's just not for colored paper, which would be super unfortunate. But I love the shine in this. I just, I don't like, I don't like how dirty it looks. Let's try it on black. I have to get a piece of black out of my drawer here. I'm out of scraps. I have seen a few of Kelly's uh, videos before. I'm not a very good colorist. <laughs> and I like coloring for the sake of coloring, but I'm not a big on coloring techniques and stuff. Like, I, I just kind of feel like I'm not going to get better at it, and I don't really care. So I don't spend a lot of time watching coloring stuff too much. This is a 60 pound cardstock as opposed to the 110 pound cardstock I was using earlier. I don't have any more scraps of that left, so I'll just use a piece of this. Silver does look great on um, dark navy. Do you know what is amazing? The, um, let me grab it. I can't think of the name. I'm terrible with names of things, but I remember what stuff looks like. <laughs> I have the, um, this is embossing powder from Ranger, the liquid platinum. This looks amazing on almost any dark colored cardstock ever. Your blacks, your navies, amazing. I love this color, it is gorgeous. It's not really a platinum and it's not really a gold. It's amazing, love it. Okay, let's try this again. Only we're gonna use a little piece of black cardstock. But it's not actually platinum, though, is it? It's kind of like a gold. Um, I have a little bit of powder, powder mess here. I should clean up before I carry on, so it doesn't taint my experiment. Oh, I wonder if this would work. I don't know. Let's try, just for fun. Nah, that would have been too easy, wouldn't it? Yeah, like champagne, that's a great way to describe it. It's very beautiful and I love using it on gold. <clears throat> All right, here's my, uh, my gold, dark card stocks, I mean. And I think that this is actually something that Jennifer McGuire turned me on to, so. I do appreciate Jennifer McGuire. She just came out with a video not too long ago using the October Hero Arts Kit, and I need to watch that because my kit should be at the post office. I have to check, actually. <laughs> I haven't been to the post office other than dropping stuff in the blue box in like a week. <laughs> I'm getting there. I pay most of my bills online, so I almost never need the post office. <laughs> Note to self, check mail today because your Hero Arts Kit is probably there. I know that it's shipped on Friday, so it is probably there. Okay. Ooh, that stamped a lot better that time. Stamped out a lot better. All right. Things to the side. Let's do um, let's do silver just because we can. How is my fan still on? I thought I turned it off. Yeah, it was Columbus Day. Oh no, I, th I think I think that it's um, I think that it's at the post office. <laughs> I got notification. I just haven't actually. And here's the thing. Here's the ultimate lazy for you guys. The post office is right next door to our new apartment. So I literally just have to go outside and walk like eight feet to the right and the post office is right there. I haven't done it yet. I'm getting there. 
I send my daughter over to drop stuff in the blue box right outside, but I'm getting there. This is way less noticeable on the black. So that is probably why we only saw them using black. Yeah, it is pretty gorgeous. This silver, I smudged it a little over there. Don't look over there. <laughs> Pretend this is perfect. And I'm doing a professional close up and there's music and all that stuff. So ignoring that part that I know that I messed up, it's a lot more difficult to see the powder smudge on the dark cardstock. Yeah, it does look a lot better on here than and just to, to compare side by side for anybody that's going to watch this video when it's not live. This is what happens when you try to use it on colored cardstock. And I'm not really sure if anything can be done about it. We did try pre-treating it with some anti-static powder, which probably wasn't going to work anyway. It was worth a shot. Unless you're going for this kind of a look, I don't really care for the way that this looks. But this, if the stamping was better on this side, I do like. So I'm going to have to rethink some of my color schemes, but I do like the way that this looks on the black. Much better. Gosh, these are a lot of fun. <laughs> and very messy. Your own Jennifer McGuire. That's awesome. <laughs> you know what else I love about Jennifer McGuire is that she just she does not give a crap. She's like, you know what? I messed up on that, and I trimmed it off, and or you know whatever I smudged, and then I just put this embellishment on. That's I mean that's what we do, right? You make a mistake, and that looks like the perfect spot for a nouveau drop because <laughs> that's just what we do. We always make mistakes, and we always make messes, and I, that's that's what I love. Sequins, exactly. It's just it just cre it's crying out for sequins. Oh my god, one of the things that I did pick up from Simon Says Damp, I got, uh, what are they called? Now I have to look it up because I don't know what it's called. I really, really, really should not have been shopping, but now I want to talk about, talk about my order that's coming in. This is how deprived I am for shopping is that I'm excited about an order that hasn't even shipped yet. <clears throat> it's still processing. I got, um... Sparkle Jewels from Lucy's Cards. I, my first ones ever, I grabbed a mix of the Rainbow Sparkle mix of little jewels. I'm very excited to, to use those. I've always wanted them. Could never find a good price on them. I had a $5 coupon from Simon Says Stamp and they're $5, so I'm like, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna do it. I will let you know when they come in. I'm really excited about it. I know that they're not a new thing. I've just never had them. Um, I, I still have tons of sequins that I'm always trying to use up, but I like sequins better inside of a shaker than I do on the outside of a card. And I know a lot of people feel that way too. And I have my Nubo drops and I do like my Nubo drops, but something about like an actual faceted rhinestone type thing, I think is going to be awesome. I'm just cleaning my stamp here. I may, just because there's glue on it, I may take this one to the sink and, and give it a rinse. These, uh, these background stamps from My Favorite Things are not cheap, and I would consider this an investment worth taking care of and giving this a good proper rinse to make sure that all the glue is off of it. I think I also grabbed, oh my goodness, I also grabbed um, one of those little bead trays too that you see Jennifer McGuire use. The Beadsmith Magical Tray for Rhinestones, which I thought would be a good investment to go along with it because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to like the Sparkle Jewels. And if I like them, I'm probably going to end up collecting them all. And if I'm going to collect them all, then I'm going to be using them more often than having a, a tray to put them on that's a lot easier to pick them up to use them from is probably going to be a good idea. It all just leads into one big pile of rationalizing my expenses. What I shouldn't be spending. 
Let's see, I also got um, a stamp set. I got a couple of the Distress Oxides from the latest release. I didn't get the whole release because I am not using all of the colors that I already have as much as I probably should. Um, like I, I will get more as I need it, but I just grabbed a couple of those uh, paper, which I need like a hole in the head, a couple of stencils, some glue, some lawn fawn. <laughs> really good deal. Uh, what's uh, Christina? Not Christina Warner. It was a Christina Warner. No, it was uh, Amy R. Posted about the a really good Simon Says stamp sale last week. And I jumped right on that. So I'm glad that I did because they had uh, stamp and die sets as low as like 10 bucks. It was amazing. Let me see if anything is still still on sale. I can direct you to it. They do still have a couple of things, a really good um, sale going on right now. Like, yeah, okay, so I got a 6x6 six six pack of Pink Fresh paper for $0.99. Cents. Uh, Lawn Fawn for $8. I got the, oh, it's not on here anymore, but um, I did get the, um, one of the, uh, it, I keep wanting to say expansion sets, but that's a video game term. <laughs> one of the add-ons, there we go, for the uh, Lawn Fawn Shadow Box that I think I got it for 10 bucks. Uh, when it's normally 30 so they do have a couple of things left I'm gonna link that for you right below so take a look if you're interested in some really cheap stuff from Simon Says Stamp they had a lot more last week obviously <laughs> and some of the stuff it looks like it's miscategorized uh, they have a couple of things that are regular price in the sale category I think that's a mistake oh I did grab a thing of that Molotov uh, masking liquid which it looks like it's regular price 20 bucks I grabbed it for three um, the Simon Says Stamp Craft Tacky Glue I grabbed one of those look <laughs> Have a look if there's anything that you can use. Snag it. They did have a lot more at the time. I'm just cleaning up here. I think that I'm probably done for the day. Grab it. It's only three bucks. I have uh, been wanting to try it too, but there was no way on earth I was going to spend anywhere close to that amount of money. Like, never. Um, I've never tried the glue Keisha. That's why I wanted to grab it. I wanted to give it a try. I've heard really good things about it. Um, I've been using my to-go-to glue the past six months or so has been the Lawn Fawn glue, and I love it. Uh, but I thought I would give the other one a try. So I will let you know if you're interested or if you want to take a risk along with me and grab one too. For that price, you really can't, uh, you really can't say no. <laughs> They're really good. Let's see. Wow. The, um, I might, I might want to place another order. <laughs> They see that the uh, the Avery L dies for their Bad Kitty set are only 99 cents for the die set. Crazy. It's too bad I can't add on to my order. I wish you could. If it's only in processing, you should be able to add more stuff on, right? <laughs> no, don't let me. I'm not allowed to spend any more money. <laughs> don't let me. I've always wanted that Bad Kitty set from Avery L. Just hadn't gotten there yet. And I figured seeing as it's probably too late this year, I wait till next year. Anyway, so I might be back in streaming tomorrow just because I have a card that I have to make tomorrow. Let me grab the thing that I'm going to do tomorrow. Here we go. So my youngest sister's birthday is in a couple of days and I need to get a card out for her. So I was going to crack open the uh, Love Bites stamp set from Kindred Stamps, uh, which is a uh, fandom set if you will. I'm um, not really permitted to say what this is inspired by because that's just kindred state policy, but um, if you have a look, it's called Love Bites. It's uh, vampire themed here. So we've got a vampire and a werewolf here with a tribal tattoo and we've got a, a young girl here. So, <laughs> so if you know what this is, if those have been enough hints, then you know what this is. Uh, my sister is a huge fan of that whole thing. So I'm not really, I've seen them, I've read the books. They're not that big of a deal to me. My, my sister, and when I say my youngest sister, she's 36, guys, so. <laughs> 
so this is not my kid sister um as a huge fan so I thought that I would make a birthday card for her using these and I need to do that tomorrow I just hope that I am in a position where I can film and visit with you guys while I do that but otherwise I need to get to some chores and I have to leave early to go pick up because she has a doctor's appointment this afternoon I have not seen um a scary movie themed <laughs> one based on it do you mean like the the parody scary movie um group <laughs> that, that parodies all the popular movies is that what you're referring to because i don't really like those <laughs> my husband loves them so i'm sure that i'll see it eventually N no no this one is a teenage teenage girl fandom <laughs> I did just see, I like scary movies as long as they're not overly bloody and I don't like, um, I don't like scenes that depict actual suffering of humans or animals. So I don't like, you know, torture scenes where they show stuff, but I like a good psychological thriller. Um, I like a little blood, a little gore. I just, I have an issue when it's actual pain that's being displayed, but we did just borrow from the library and loved it. What was it called? A Quiet Place? with John Krasinski, I think is his name, and his wife, Emily Blonde. It was amazing if you're in, into a, a good scary movie for this time of year, something to cuddle up. Definitely, <laughs> definitely check out that movie. I enjoyed it a lot. My husband does not like horror movies at all, and he actually sat through and watched that one with me. So it was just, just good enough. It was just good enough for him, but I loved it. Anyway, I have to do my stuff so I can get ready for my sister. Hopefully I can uh, stream again tomorrow. And if I don't stream tomorrow, then I will still show you guys the card. I'll probably have pictures on my Instagram when I do this. But other than that, um, have a great day. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Let me try to get my phone off the thing before I say bye. <laughs> bye. Take care.